For the last four years or so, there's been one tool that I cannot edit video without. This is the Tor Box. Now this isn't only used for video editing. It works amazing for photo editors too, like Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Capture One. But I'm mainly a video editor, so I use it with DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, but it works the same with Adobe Premiere Pro and pretty much any other software that you use keyboard shortcuts with. And this video isn't at all sponsored by Tor Box. They did send this over to me like two years ago, and I was supposed to do a video, but I didn't because I had the original Tor Box, which came out right before this, and it wasn't a huge amount of differences. There were a few, but for me, not enough to make a second video on the same tool. And excuse mine, it's absolutely filthy and looks like it's been worn into the ground, and that's because I will not edit a video without my Tor Box. I pretty much forgot how to. Now the title of this video does say MacBook, but that's just because that's what I use it with. It works the same with any other Apple computer or Windows for that matter. I love this tool so much that if I heard that it went out of business, I would immediately go online and try to order every single remaining tour box that I could find. Just to make sure that for the remainder of my editing years that I have left in my life, I will always have a tour box by my side. I'm being dead serious, it's that good. All right, so how does it work? Very simple, you see all these little clicky buttons here? Each one of these clicky buttons and twisty wheels and turny knobs can all be assigned a keyboard shortcut through the tour box app. And the beauty of it is, is it's designed to work one-handed. So once you get used to where everything is and how the whole layout is laid out, which you will, it's gonna speed up your workflow probably faster than anything else that I could think of. So for video editing, this is how I have mine set up. The space bar plays your timeline on, I think every single video editing platform out there, even non-video edit, just videos you just press space bar and it plays so i want this long button up top here to be my play button so i just open up the tour box app press this button the app actually recognizes me pressing that button and then i'll open up the shortcut box and press my space bar and now the space bar is registered to this long top button so now when i press this button my computer thinks that i'm actually pressing the space bar no matter what app i'm in as long as the tour box app is open up in the background whenever i press this button it's going to act as if i'm pressing the space bar on my computer now this tour button right here is what i want to use to make cuts to my clips on my timeline so again i'll just open up the tour box app here and then i will physically click this button and the app will recognize that I wanna make modifications to the action that this button is providing. And then since the shortcut that I use in DaVinci Resolve for cutting is Command B, I'll go ahead and register that in the Tor Box app to work with this button. And just like that, whenever I'm in my timeline and I click this button, it's gonna make a cut wherever the play hit is. And you can set up your Tor Box with different profiles for different apps that you could either make yourself or download off the Tor Box website. So again, this might act as your play button for Final Cut Pro, but it might also work as your auto color tool in Lightroom or your lasso tool in Photoshop. And you could also use this side button over here to give all your other buttons a second option. So again, this top button might play my timeline when I click it, but I could also assign a combo of the side button and the top button to do something like play my timeline at a faster speed. These two buttons right here I have set to delete. So this left one I have set to be a ripple delete key, which means anytime I delete a clip, everything to the right of it will then shift down so that there's no space and it'll bring the timeline back together, similar to your magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. And the right one I have set as just a regular delete and it'll just leave that gap there for you to do whatever you want with it. If I turn this knob right here, it scrolls my playhead either forward or backward on my timeline, depending on which direction I turn it. And with the same wheel, if I press it in and hold it, the computer thinks that I'm pressing the option button on my keyboard. That's how I have it set, which is a great way to duplicate your clips. If I rotate this dial right here on my left, it zooms in and out on my timeline, which is something I am literally using every few seconds. And if I click the same dial in, I have it set to select all the clips on my timeline. This little tiny half moon button right here next to the center dial, I have set to make a compound clip with whatever clips I have highlighted. And below the center wheel, we have the up, down, left, and right buttons. I have the left button set to undo an action. I have the right button set to redo an action. The top button right here, I have set to whatever clip I have selected on my DaVinci Resolve timeline, 
When I click that, it'll shift it one clip over to the left. So it'll trade places with the clip to the left of it. They won't delete it, they'll just swap spots. So the more I click it, I can kind of move a clip closer to the front of my timeline. And the opposite goes for the bottom button. When I click that, it moves my clips to the right. Now DaVinci Resolve works in a node-based color system. So in the color tab on DaVinci Resolve, I create a new serial node just by simply clicking this little side button right here. Every time I click this, whatever clip is highlighted, it just creates a new node. And again, all of this is happening without you even paying attention to the tour box once you get used to it. It's kind of like a video game. Once you buy a new video game system or a new controller or a new game, every so often you're gonna have to kind of look down at the controller to make sure you're pressing the right thing that you wanna be pressing. But once you get used to it, you're not looking down at your controller anymore. You just focus on the screen busting ass. And the same thing goes for the tour box, which is one of the things that make it so great. So once you get used to the feeling of having just one hand on this and your fingers kind of just remember where each button is and what action those buttons do, you are making changes on your timeline on the fly super, super fast, especially cuts and deletes. Now I have the Torbox Neo, like in the Matrix, which connects with a USB-C, but they now have the Torbox Elite which is wireless and connects via Bluetooth, which I don't have yet, but I'm gonna send this video over to them and hopefully they forgive me for taking so long to make this video on the Torbox Neo. I'm telling you guys, if you do any type of video editing or photo editing, this is probably gonna be not only your most affordable control panel, I would call it a control panel, but the most useful. All the other ones are big and clunky. You need all this room. You can't fit it inside of your backpack. This can go pretty much anywhere that this can go. It's super small and compact and it's lightweight. But the great thing is, is when you're using this with one hand, it never slides. It stays where it's supposed to be. Look, I'm moving the whole table. I always have my left hand on my tour box, my mouse on my right, and my eyes on the screen. And I breeze through my edits. It's perfect. Thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.